Oakley, Oakley, ladies and gentlemen. So here we are. I'm going to do the first two sections of chapter four, which deals with radicals. Basically, uh, we're going to be looking at exponents in quite a radical story in quite a bit of detail, along with that exponents as well, because uh, we show how they are related very soon. <sighs> Um, this chapter or this section just sort of deals with a few uh, things that you should know and I'll just review a bunch of things here and hopefully give you a better uh, start to this chapter okay so first of all I'd like you to think about uh, in an exponential situation when you have an exponent this is your base right and that's your exponent or we call it a power as well so 2 to the power x 5 to the power x 5 to the power 2 whatever it is you know what an exponent is hopefully uh, this is just reminding you now when we deal with radicals um, the radical is this symbol here right the index is on the outside square root notice that if we have a square root if it's the square root of 4 that's actually got a 2 there but we don't put it Okay, so the 2 is implied, it's assumed. Uh, and what's inside is called the radicand. Uh, look at a couple of exponent laws here, 5 to be exact, well, 3 laws and just 2 sort of definitions. If you multiply, same base, add the exponents, right? Divide, so that can look like this as well, x over a, or x to the a, x over b. Either of these situations, right, that's division that's division what we do is we subtract the exponents I can show you how these work and why they work if you come talk to me but hopefully you've had a look at this at some point in the past here we have a power to a power which means that we end up multiplying the exponents you need to remember that anything to the power of zero is one and a negative exponent becomes positive when you flip it and similarly I guess if you look at this uh, if I said 1 over x to the negative 2, that's going to equal x to the positive 2. Okay? It becomes positive when it's up top. Uh, just when it's opposite. So negative on the bottom, positive up top. Negative on the top, positive on the bottom. Okay. Now we need to look at a bunch of things here. We're looking at perfect squares and perfect cubes. And we're going to be using these to solve a bunch of equations. Uh, well, not necessarily equations, but we're going to be using these, right? The more of these you know off by heart, the better you will be. Uh, you just definitely know most all of these. Definitely know all of these even more, right? 11 squared is 121, right? We got 12 squared is equal to 144. We got 13 squared is 169. We got 14 squared is... 216 and we got 15 squared is 225 no it's 196 sorry this one okay I just know those because I've been using them similarly the square root of 144 is 12 blah, blah, blah. these you know if you know the first five which you should be pretty comfortable with you'll probably be all right okay now let's have a look at some things here estimating roots no calculator so if I wanted you to tell me what the square root of 30 would be estimated without a calculator right well you look here and you say okay the square root of 30 is between 25 and 36 so it's got to be between 5 and 6 so my guess would be it's closer to 25 so say uh, 5.48 I don't know let's give it a shot so now square root of 5.48 square root of 30 5.48 bang look at that how about the square root of 60 you give that a shot. Okay, or how about the cube root of 40? Okay, let's see if we can figure these out. Estimating without calculators. So the square root of 60, there's no number here. So we imply a 2, right? There's always a square root. So 60 is between 49 and 60. Now it's definitely closer to 8, so I'm going to go 7.8. Let's go now the square root of 60. 7.74, so I was close, not bad. Cube root of 40. 40 lies between 27 and 64, almost halfway closer to that. that is, that's between 3 and 4. So how about 3 point, I don't know, let's go 3.4. All right, so on your calculator, you're going to have to figure out how to do cube root. Okay, for me, it's this. Cube root of 40, I got 3.4. Look at that, we're pretty good at estimating. Yay! Okay, fractions and decimals. Well, here are a couple other things. One rule that we should know with radicals is that if you have the square root of x over y, that's equal to the square root of x over the square root of y. OK, 
okay? So if I have the square root of 4 ninths, that's the square root of 4 over the square root of 9, which is 2 thirds. Much simpler, well, not that hard to do, right? So let's look at decimals now. Uh, if I gave you the square root of 25, you'd be able to tell me that's 5. If I gave you the square root of 0.25, what do you think that would be? Well, what you need to figure out here, folks, is what you already know. You've multiplied decimals in the past, right? In order to have two decimals in your answer, you have to have... Uh, yeah, so look, if you multiply 0 0.5 by 0 0.6, one decimal, one decimal you know that you're going to have a two decimal answer here. So it's going to be 0 0.30. Okay. Simil so uh, what uh, people have a uh, tendency to do here is they have a tendency to call this 0 0.05. Okay. But I'm telling you that it's 0 0.5. And now if you want to be 0 0.05, then you have to have four uh, places, right? Because two decimal places times two decimal places will give you four decimal places. Now a trick here would be, or not a trick, but a question, is there an answer for this? Is that going to be a five of some sort? And the answer is no, because it's the wrong amount of decimals. Okay? So you have to remember how to multiply decimals and apply what you know to, to this new stuff here. Okay? Uh, hopefully we'll have some questions and be able to clear up those issues. Let's see what else we have here. Neg netic, neg negative radicands, which means that, um, first of all, can you give me the cube root of 8? I think you'd be able to tell me when you look up at your perfect cubes that the answer is 2. Can you give me the cube root of negative 8? And the answer to that would be yes, you can. It's negative 2, okay, because minus 2 times minus 2 is equal to positive 4. And then you have positive 4 times minus 2, which is equal to negative 8. So with these negative radicands, uh, you have to understand that uh, when you're multiplying by a negative, it jumps back and forth. It becomes positive, then negative, then positive, then negative, then positive, then negative. And if you think about exponents, a negative number squared will always be positive. A negative number cubed will be negative. A negative number to the power of 4 will be positive, and then negative, and then positive, and then negative. So hopefully you can see a pattern here where every odd exponent keeps the negative number, and anything to the power of an even exponent is always going to be positive. All right, so if you think about the relationship between exponents and radicals, okay, that means that any even index, okay, so let's write this down. Uh, we can only have negative radicands with odd index, okay? Only with an odd index. Um, hopefully that'll make sense. We've done this in the past, so it shouldn't be anything new, okay? Uh, what might, what isn't going to be new either is uh, this number system stuff, okay? Because I'm trying to get to somewhere here, um, but that was just a review of radicals quickly. Uh, maybe a couple things that you don't remember, maybe a couple things that you maybe even didn't hear, but now we're looking at something else. Quickly, number systems, okay? This should definitely be um, not new to you. We start with natural numbers, which are counting numbers, right? Uh, one, two, three, four. We talked about this in class, why they're called counting numbers. If you add a zero in the front, you end up having what we call whole numbers. The introduction of zero was a very important uh, development. Okay, next stage, uh, in elementary school, they told you there was no negative numbers. Well, now we are telling you there are negative numbers, okay? You know that negative numbers uh, exist, and if you take the whole family of negative and positive numbers, they are called integers. Notice that we haven't had any numbers yet between these and you know that there exists a bunch of fractions in between there so when we include fractions we start talking about rational numbers okay so family wise right if you think about it boom here you got rational numbers rational numbers includes everything right everything at all everything inside it um, and this one could be called integers because that's kind of the next step down and then if we even further in 
right? Then you've got your whole numbers, and right on the inside, the smallest group that you have are what we call the natural numbers. This picture just wants, to, I just want to show you that natural numbers are within whole numbers, and these are within integers, and then rational covers the whole thing, okay? Covers the whole thing. Now, what we're going to be dealing with uh, in this section here, and what you're going to have to be uh, answering is what are irrational numbers, okay? Irrational numbers are those, um, well, let's, uh, what I should write down here too is that rational numbers, they sure they're fractions, but they can also be written as decimals, okay? But they are terminating decimals, terminating and non-repeating decimals, okay? Um, so, for example, 0 0.333 is repeating, that's one-third, right? 0 0.25 is one-quarter. Now, irrational numbers are those things, this, I think I told you the story about this guy, Hippasus, right? The square root of two, they were trying to figure out that uh, if this could be written as a fraction, they realized that it couldn't. It was a 1.41, blah, 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 blah. It doesn't end, okay? Uh, irrational numbers are non-repeating. Okay, non-terminating decimals. Okay, and the problem is, the reason we know that these are irrational is because they cannot be written as fractions. Okay, and what it ends up being is that most roots that aren't perfect squares or perfect cubes are irrational numbers. So, for example, if I went the square root of 5, right, uh, you can see maybe repetition here, but this is not a terminating or an obviously repeating decimal, so you'd have to say that that's irrational, okay? Uh, we have lots of irrational numbers that we have, things like pi, things like e, things like phi, things like... Um, there's a couple others, I can't think of them right now. But anyways, what I find super cool is that these things, these irrational constants, these irrational numbers, actually explain our... Uh, uh, our, our natural world, you know, they they pop up in circles. They talk about exponential growth and decay, natural growth and decay, and just how plants grow and, and humans grow, the ratios of things. It, it's pretty neat stuff. So hopefully this will uh, set you up for uh, that section, and there will be more to come.